Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video we are talking all about kitchens and how to avoid making them look ugly. We are starting from the top and working our way down, so let's get into the video. We can't start at the top without talking about ceilings and Every space in your home has one, including your kitchen. I love a decorative ceiling. I love something interesting on a ceiling, and it's something worth considering in your kitchen if you can have that. If you find that you have a lot of grease and dust and dirt that gets on your ceiling, maybe having something highly intricate is not for you. But don't write off just painting your ceiling an interesting color or something that will work within the space. Now, ceilings are also the place where we have got lighting, and every designer says you should have three sources of lighting in a space, and I, of course, agree. And a ceiling is a great place to have two of those three lighting sources. One being recessed lighting. These are going to be those can lights that are giving you all of that lighting you need to actually utilize this space. I recommend looking for these that have a temperature adjustment to them so you can actually change them according to what you need in your space. That's a really fantastic way of getting a great color lighting in your house. I like a space that's a little bit warmer, but in a kitchen, you want a lot of light so you can really see what you're doing. However, you also want to have some sort of light fixture on the ceiling. Maybe that's a chandelier of some sort. Maybe it's a flush mount. Maybe those are pendants. That's a great place for lighting in your kitchen as well. So those two are necessary. You know that I love when cabinetry extends to the ceiling. I don't like having a big gap of space there. I think it gets dusty and dirty and then you have an awkward place of like, where do you put things? What decor can you put up there? Do you need to put stuff? Can you reach it? I don't like any of that. So I always suggest taking your cabinetry to the ceiling. Now, of course, some people already have cabinetry in their space and they have that gap of space there and they're like, but wait a second, Garrett, what do I do? You can actually have a contractor come and build that out for you and actually fill the space in with something decorative, almost a faux fur down. A fur down would be like a bulkhead built over cabinetry. And while that's maybe not the most popular answer or the most current thing, it definitely will fill that space in, saving you the time it takes to have to clean up there or reach anything or worry about what sort of decor you're going to put in that space. So consider bringing your cabinetry or making it look like they extend all the way to the ceiling. And I always love a big chunky crown molding. And I think if you are doing a molding on top of your cabinetry at the ceiling height, extend that molding throughout the entire space. It gives a really cohesive and clean look. We also really need to talk about open shelves in a kitchen. This is something very popular, but as I have always said, I don't personally love them because they do get dust build up on them. And if you're putting your dishes or you're displaying things, they have to be cleaned often. Like who's putting their dishes on there to have to clean them right before they use them? Not for me. So if you are going to do open shelving in a kitchen, I definitely recommend you install all that in an area away from any sort of cooking space where grease will build up on them because you don't want everything on your shelves just getting dirty, dusty, and greasy. While we're talking about that whole cabinet shelf area, we need to address a vent hood because there are some vent hoods that just are not great for a kitchen and they may do the job of venting the space, but they actually have sides and slopes where dust builds up on them and it just creates even more of a mess. I personally believe in designing out the maintenance a space requires. And this is one of those things where I don't want to have to clean the top of my cabinets or shelves or a dusty vent hood. So look for one that really fills in the space that doesn't have sides that slope or slant because you will get a buildup of dust and grease there and nobody wants to have to deal with that. So be mindful about what you're installing in the upper portion of your kitchen because you will have to clean it. It will require maintenance and you don't want something that requires deep scrubbing or constant cleaning. It's just not worth the struggle. When we talk about upper cabinets though, we need to talk about the underside of them because this is one of the most underutilized spaces in a kitchen and can make the world of difference. One of the things you can install there is task lighting. This of course is beautiful and it makes a big impact in a space. You can also install lighting above your cabinets if you have that big gap of space, but under cabinet lighting is very, very useful and can really provide an atmosphere to the space, which I absolutely love. It's also worth considering adding outlets to the underside of your cabinets to get them out of the backsplash. Now, of course, any electrical work you have done throughout your home, you want to have a licensed electrician 
amount to do that work for you, but it's worth considering whether or not you want to do this. Obviously, moving electrical and doing a lot of these things is expensive and it comes at a cost, but don't put this ahead of something that's really necessary in your space because there are also some really great hacks out there. Like my favorite paintable outlet covers, I absolutely love these because you can install them over just about any outlet and paint them so you're not actually painting an outlet and you can have a muralist come and paint them to look like your backsplash. If you have a really great marble or tile backsplash that you don't want outlets to be seen in or if you already have them, well this is a great alternative to get them to disappear and blend into the background while still being usable. I always think a backsplash should be something that is really functional but that adds something to the space. And for me, I really like a very classic feeling space. No matter what style that is, I want something that's really timeless. And a backsplash, in my opinion, isn't necessarily the space to use a really vibrant or personal material. I personally like something that blends in with the countertop material, even if it's not the exact same thing. Right now, slab cut stone backsplashes are so popular and very in, but they're very expensive. So if you can do them, I definitely suggest you look into it, but it's okay if you can't and you can find a tile that works really beautifully with the countertop you have going on. And of course, what's great about that is you can install a tile backsplash at a later date. So you can do things in steps and phases, which I think is really fantastic. So take the time and figure out the right material for your space. And maybe if you have to hold off on doing that, do it because you can get something great installed later on that won't require a lot more effort than it would have taken initially to do it when you first renovated your kitchen. I think the most important thing when it comes to a backsplash is that it's cleanable, it's usable, and that it draws color from the countertop so that things feel cohesive and they make a little bit more sense and we can extend that beautiful countertop you spent a lot of money on onto the backsplash instead of distracting from it. Let's talk about countertops because if you can do a slab cut stone backsplash, I think that's amazing, but you don't necessarily have to, and a countertop can be a real statement in a space. But it's worth remembering that countertops sit on horizontal surfaces, so it's not going to make the biggest impact initially in your space. It can make a world of difference while you're using it, so I definitely suggest you consider how you actually use and function in a space. What are the things you're cooking? What are the colors you like? And what level of maintenance are you prepared to take when it comes to a countertop? Right now, marble is very in. But if you're not prepared to take care of it, maybe it's not for you and you want to go with something like a quartz or maybe a granite. There's no wrong choice when it comes to countertops so long as you consider the maintenance you are going to put into that space. Soapstone is beautiful but it can also be a little bit more high maintenance so maybe you opt for something different. There's nothing wrong with that. However, what is very current right now and is very timeless in the long term are honed or matte finished countertops. So I would definitely suggest looking into those because having a really shiny surface shows all of the marks, all of the dirt, the grease, the dust, anything that's on it. So having a matte finish just looks a little bit more timeless and it's a little bit less maintenance to take care of, especially if you opt for a softer stone like marble. Speaking of maintenance and the way you live in your house and your life, that's what we talk about all the time on this channel and I try to advise you as best I can on being realistic in your space and not just picking things for the sake of them being beautiful, which is why if you have haven't already, you should definitely take a moment, hit that subscribe button, join the Le Chic family, and turn on the bell notification to get notified every time I upload. And after you've done that, please let me know so that I can personally welcome you to the channel. Speaking of maintenance, we need to talk about what you're doing in the space in the kitchen and one of the things that gets used the most, and that's your faucet and your sink. I love a statement faucet in a kitchen. However, you want to be mindful of the material you are selecting, once again, because of the maintenance. Kitchens get used a lot, so you don't want to have to put more work than is necessary. If you're not going to polish that unlacquered brass, maybe it's not for you. If you don't want to see the water spots on that chrome, maybe it's not for you. I like mixing metals, so I'll do different things throughout the kitchen, but for you, you really have to think about what you are going to use, are they gonna get fingerprints on them? Are you gonna see all of that? Maybe you just opt for a brush nickel finish that's really timeless. I think most hardware choices, so long as you're consistent with them, look good. So don't worry so much about the color you're choosing, worry more about the maintenance you are going to put into that. However, one of the biggest trends right now and one of the most beautiful things you can put into a kitchen but may not work for everyone is actually a marble sink. People right now are really loving having custom sinks made out of the same material as their countertops for a very seamless look. 
this is beautiful. You have the same issues with a marble sink that you would with a marble countertop. It can stain, it can etch, and you may have to put a little bit of work into maintaining that. And I don't know if you wanna do that in a sink necessarily. So share with me your opinions on that because I really wanna hear from you. What are your opinions on the marble sinks? One thing to keep in mind if you opt for a stainless steel sink is that if you're going to take and scrub it with your sponge, it'll scratch and it'll show. So consider what you're doing, what level of maintenance and cleaning you're putting into the space to determine what materials you select for that, especially when it comes to something that gets a lot of use, like your kitchen sink. Let's actually move back to countertops and talk about the edges of them, that kind of finished edge you see. Right now, what's really popular is a square edge that looks a little bit thicker. It's definitely worth considering in your space. However, that really says what the style of the space is. No matter what type of cabinetry, colors, or finish, is, you can really make a space feel more modern or more traditional with the edging on your countertops. So consider whether you want that square edge or whether you want an OG or a bull nose. Consider that because it really makes a statement and it says what the style of your kitchen really is. Let's talk about those lower cabinets because these are some of the most used items in your kitchen and we can make a big impact with them by opting for drawers. Put as many drawers into your kitchen as possible because they give you access to more of the space you have in those lower cabinets. You might already have them and you can definitely have some interior drawers installed that custom fit your kitchen and that can add a lot of storage to it. But if you are doing a renovation on your kitchen, it's worth putting in drawer cabinets instead of having those secondary ones installed because you're gonna have to open a cabinet door to get them out. Nobody wants a hassle of that. So as many drawers as possible as you can put into your kitchen is the best thing. This is also really great if you're considering aging in place when you're designing a space because you don't have to get on your hands and knees to reach into the back of the cabinet. Nobody wants to have to deal with that, so you can design that out by opting for more drawers. We need to talk about hardware because hardware in a kitchen is like jewelry. We all love it. We want a little bit of it, something to sparkle, and I love that for a kitchen. But when it comes to your hardware, don't be afraid to mix and match some different things. You can mix metals or you can mix different styles of hardware. Definitely do your homework and your research on that because the poles and the knobs on your cabinetry are something you interact with on a daily basis and you wanna make sure that they're good quality, that they work for you and that they're convenient. Now cabinets are not all made the same and there are multiple styles of doors. And I'm not talking about like flat panel or shaker style, I'm talking about partial full overlay and inset doors. This can make a big difference in the style of your space. Partial overlay cabinetry doors don't cover the full face of the cabinet. I personally don't love these because I think they look a little bit builder grade. A full overlay cabinetry door will cover the entire face of the cabinet and all you will see is door. However, my personal favorite is an inset cabinet door. These are inset into the face of the cabinet. So you see the full face and the full door. I personally like these because they have a more traditional look to them and that's my style. So consider what you do in your kitchen and what style you want the space to have. Something worth considering in your kitchen is the chef's kitchen, which essentially just means that your oven is built into cabinetry instead of a one piece unit. This can be really good if you're doing like a French door oven because you actually get more access to the oven. So definitely consider whether or not that will work in your space or whether you want to have those built-in elements. Now I know you love some of these little tips and tricks, so be sure you check out my kitchen playlist list that I will link right here and in the description box down below because we've made a ton of really helpful kitchen videos and if you're enjoying this I know you will love those. Let's talk about the flooring in your space because you have flooring throughout your entire house including your kitchen and you want to make sure you're choosing the right material. Now I don't personally think one is better than another outside of like carpet, nobody wants that in their kitchen. But if you opt for something that is a solid surface, it will be easier to clean. However, consider what you are doing in your kitchen and the lifestyle you live to determine the material you choose. For me, wood floor would not be an issue because I really don't make that big of a mess in my house and I clean up after myself quite often. However, if I wanted something like vinyl, that would work too. It's really durable and it's easy to clean. Tile's a great option because once again, super durable, easy to clean, and you could opt for natural stone. That would be beautiful. 
All of those are solid surfaces that are easy to clean because they're flat, they don't have a really heavy texture to them, and they can be looked after. I also think it's worth noting that tile or solid surface floors sometimes need grout. And grout can be a really tricky thing to work with because it needs to be there to fill in the gaps, but you don't want to have it be too overwhelming because it stains and it gets dirty pretty easily. So when you are having tile installed or natural stone, use the thinnest grout lines you possibly can in any area of your home not just the floors in your kitchen, but the backsplash or your bathroom or wherever, because you're spending a lot of money on that tile, you wanna see the most of it, and you wanna have the least amount of maintenance, and that grout will have to be cleaned. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure you share with me in the comments section down below, because I wanna hear from you. What is one finish, idea, material, or hack you love for a kitchen that you want everyone to know about? Share with me down below, and be sure you give this video a like and subscribe if you have not already. I also know that you know someone that they are about to embark on a kitchen renovation, but they have no taste or style, so be sure you share this video with them so they get it right, because friends help friends. And I will see you in the next one.